Hello beautiful and welcome back to new dev vlog episode. Oh boy, today I'm gonna have a bunch of stuff, a bunch of work that I need to get done. Because last episode I promised you I'm going to create an inventory system. And you bet I'm gonna fucking create an inventory system like you've never seen before in this game. Also, if you have a keen eye, you'll see behind me some maps going on. But I'm gonna cover that later in the video. Uh, and you better be excited for it because uh, I spend a lot of a lot of time on making this one. But anyway, as per usual, I'm not gonna blabber too much at the beginning of the video because uh, I hate when I watch videos on YouTube that take way too long to even start. So I'm not gonna do that. And as per usual, I'm gonna ask you guys to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you so please, you can support me on Patreon because limited edition for the Christmas, the price is now $9.99 and you get access to a bunch of cool maps and you don't wanna miss it boy, trust me. With all that stuff out of the way, now it's time to get to work and actually make the graphics for this inventory. So yeah, let's go back to our trusty text draw editor and start doing the, the stuff. Well, you might want to ask, why are there only deagles in the boxes? Well, that's because I'm only I'm, I'm using deagles right now only for reference, but later those boxes will be mostly empty and only when you receive items, uh, the items will show in there with their respective icon. So yeah, now it's time to export the code and actually import into the game mode and tweak it a little bit. Alright, I made some arrays and assigned them to their respective text rows and I made sure to create separate arrays for the backdrop, uh, the big box and for the each individual slot as well for the each individual number corresponding to each slot so that I know which is which. Okay, and I added a quick little script just to see it, how it looks in game. And the way you actually access the inventory is by pressing by pressing the Y key on the keyboard, which is kind of slick, and I like it. And as you can see from the video, uh, this needs some cleaning up because right now it looks like a mess. So I guess it's time to head back into the script and actually do some work. And the first thing that I did is to create an array 
which is going to store information for us. And there are a few types of information that we are going to store. The first one is the type of the object. This is like the define, definer of the object. Uh, this is going to be like an unique ID that uh, each item is going to have. And the next one is the name, info, all of these are pretty much self-explanatory. Stackable, it means that the item is going to stack, it's going to have uh, multiple, there are going to be multiple items in the same slot. And then we are going to have uh, the amount of the items that are going to be stacked in the same slot. And then some meta information which is going to be related to some bonuses and stuff that players are going to be able to add on their equipment and the weapons and so on. And this is how the inventory looks with all the slots empty. And for now, in today's episode, I'm not gonna focus on saving what's like saving inside the database, what is going to be stored into the inventory that I'm probably going to do off camera and show you in the next episode how it looks and how it works. Now I actually want to start adding items in the inventory and I started by creating another array which is going to store all the preset information on how the model is actually, it's actually going to render for the player. Like the rotations, the model ID, the color of the model if I so choose to uh, apply a color to it and all this stuff which is going to be related to rendering the actual item. And now I've gone back to the text draw editor to create uh, a new item. This one is going to be a meat uh, like thing, chunk, how do you call it? I don't know. A few minutes later and I wrote another function which is going to give the player an item and the data for that item it's actually going to be taken from this array that I'm selecting right now and if you want to stop and take a look you can just pause the video because I don't want to have to explain everything and I don't want to make this series like a tutorial mode. It's enough that it takes me a lot of time to create this stuff. I don't want to have to spend a lot more time to actually explain it. One command later and now we have a way to add items in the inventory and I'm really happy that I have gotten to this step. From now on it's only going to be getting a lot harder <laughs> and if you're curious about the code for the command here it is. But if you have a good eye you would have noticed that there are no numbers that specify the amount of that certain item. So I fixed it. I added the number. Next up I added a stack overflow protection that will detect when the max amount of a stack is surpassed and it will create uh, that specific item in a new slot as shown in the video. And now you might ask yourself but how do I interact with the inventory? What are the functionalities of the inventory? Well let me explain. First of all, I want that when you click an item, you select it and there will be information displayed uh, about the item in the box on the left, which you've probably noticed in the video earlier. Second of all, I want the player to be able to move the items in every slot he wishes to do so. And I want the player to also be able to switch the items in between them. And on top of that, to make it even more difficult, I'm gonna make it so that you can stack items on top of each other. For example, if you have 100 meat into a slot and then 200 meat in another slot, you can place them on top of each other and just use a single slot. You know, I think that's useful to save space and manage your inventory, which all of us, I, I think, love doing that in RPG games. And there are also going to be non-stackable items, for example, like equipment, like weapons, which will not be able to be stackable. Uh, you won't be able to stack on top of each other. They will take uh, each slot individually. This is how the item information uh, looks in-game. This one was probably the easiest one to make and now it's time to make the item switching places uh, functionality as well. 
and now this one is done as well this one actually took me a little bit longer because I kept running into bugs uh, but I eventually got it and after a bit more tinkering and modifications I finally managed to complete it and perfect it uh, well not really perfected there is also there is always room for improvement but yeah this is how it's finally going to function and look like and I'm really proud of how it turned and if you wanna check the code and replicate this for yourself I'm gonna leave this video here and you can pause it and copy anytime you want uh, you are free to do so you don't have to ask for my permission uh, since I'm posting this on YouTube everyone who's w willing to copy it and wants to do something of their own can do so so yeah you're welcome and now to put the cherry on top of the cake I guess it's time to show you the map I've been working on for the last past week and this is actually a... I'm actually remaking Fort Carson uh, into a city inspired from Red Dead Redemption 2 the city is called Saint Denis I'm gonna actually post some screenshots on the screen right now so that you can get a point of reference this is how it turned out uh, obviously this side is not done yet I've only mainly worked on this part of the city and this is how it actually looks like here we have a church with some carriage damn I can speak with some carriages and yeah, you can you can check all the details yourself I think it looks pretty pretty damn slick and I also made this side of the map which I'm really happy about a lot of the the, the places in there have these um, balconies with like tables and couches on top and it's in the game in the in Red Dead Redemption it's actually a lot more narrow all the streets are a lot more narrow than this but I think it turned out pretty well this is like a little back alley which has a lot of detail and I think it looks amazing I, I really I really like this place it's really atmospheric there's also this uh, small restaurant here let me show you there is this restaurant here with the carriage and this tavern here and most of these places will have an interior at some point in time um, but not right now right now I have a lot more work to do on the exterior itself and if you look down on the ground there is a lot of mud and a lot of spatter all over the place because in Red Dead Redemption the city of Saint Denis it's actually in like a rainforest um, climate and basically it rains a lot and uh, the roads and the soil is always wet and there is always a lot of mud and I tried to replicate that as best as I could in this game uh, oops that's a little bit of a rendering issue which I'm going to fix later but obviously you can't really replicate anything in this good old game you know so yeah this is the mapping I showed at the beginning of the video and I hope you guys like it uh, I surely do myself and if you do like it uh, make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're not subscribed I mean if this hasn't convinced you to subscribe yet then I don't know what will also don't forget about the patreon there is the limited time Christmas sale going 9.99 baby and I guess now I'm gonna <laughs> untie my my horse here and say goodbye to you guys so yeah with that being said I'll see you in the next one see ya